So you're joining me here today for um, part three of the sur school survival skills series. And if you haven't watched part one and part two and the Ask Me Anything, it's all in the Raising Our Resilience parent group. So you can just click over to that and it's all up in the top pinned as announcements. Um, I've been leaving my videos up ever since shelter in place on purpose. Usually these come down. And the reason why is because I understand that parents need more resources than ever. And I basically have a good fat library for you to peruse and get your needs met right here in the Raising Our Resilience group. Now, today's topic is setting limits that stick with an emphasis on setting and stick. <laughs> so we have limits, right? We, we, of course we do. Like there's no hitting or biting in our family. Um, you know, we all help, we all help with meal preparation. Um, you know, uh, punctuality is, is, is a value in our home. We, we show up on time, things like this. Uh, we speak to each other respectfully and kindly, right? But oftentimes the parts that become the hardest in back to school, but also at any time, and my clients know this, we, we, <laughs> we've cycled through several, uh, all of my clients will talk about, you know, we're setting this limit now, but the next week it's this one, right? We all have certain ones that are harder to establish, certain boundaries or rules or expectations. And I know this, I know this, I know this so well, because I have spent 15 years in the classroom, also raising my own stepchildren, experiencing this firsthand thousands and thousands of times. <laughs> So that's why we're focusing in on setting limits. So do you find yourself repeating the same instruction over and over again and getting being ignored or having your child do the opposite of what you ask? Um, do you possibly uh, find yourself in power struggles or maybe there's a big meltdown when you do follow through with a limit that you're setting? If this is you, if you said yes to those two or something similar, you're in the right training. I'm so glad you're here. So step one is really crucial. And it's actually, I'm going to start with the thing that every parent needs to know to avoid. Parents have a tendency to ask for what they want, or sorry, ask for what they don't want instead of what they want. I'm going to say it again. We tend to ask for what we don't want instead of what we want. And part two of it is even when we ask for what we want, we assume that the kid, the ch our children know what we mean, even when we're being kind of vague in general. So I'll give you an example. First one, um, oh sweetie, don't run, don't run, don't run. And your little one is hearing run, run, run. Notice I'm asking for what I don't want. It's a lot easier to say no, like no, I don't like that, but it's a lot harder to say what you do want to describe it, to say what you do want and to be able to back up why. And that's what we're gonna work on today together, a little mini version. With my clients, we spend you know, a whole module on this. So we're not gonna be able to do the entire module right now, but I want you to have a mini version with me right now, okay? And let me just go ahead and tag Flaka because she wanted to come into this. Hey Flaka, hope you can make it. So what I want you to, to, to know is that instead of asking for what you don't want, you can ask for what you want now. Sometimes when we ask for what we want, we're, we are too vague, like pick up that mess. Well, pick up that mess to you could mean, you know, um, pick, pick up the, the cup that you spilled off the floor, get a paper towel and wipe up the mess, and then use the mop to clean up the rest. To a child, it could just be like, pick up the cup and go like this for you to take it from their hand. <laughs> they don't know necessarily what, you, what it is that you're asking for. So we often will make the mistake of assuming that our children know exactly what it is that we, that we need from them. And also we just kind of forget their age and their limited life experience. Does that make sense? Like we'll say it in a way that another adult or even an older child would understand, but we don't, we were kind of lost track in the moment of the fact that they actually don't know what you mean. Now, if we spell out everything all the time, we're gonna be exhausted. They're gonna feel like we're you know, breaking things down too much and being maybe too micromanaging. But what I want you to use these two insights for today is for a, a limit that you find yourself really frustrated about when you're trying to set it and your child isn't listening. So here are some signs. Um, you're, you're frustrated and you tend to say things like, how many times do I need to tell you? In other words, it's a th something that you're, it's on repeat. You tell them and they break it anyway. Then you have to tell them again and there's frustration. 
So if something pops up in your mind, oh, oh yeah, I know which one. Write it in the comments right now so I know which limit you're getting stuck on. Okay, that's one. Um, another could be that there's something new happening. Like for example, now we have to um, differentiate and make a distinction between school screen time and recreational screen time. And we have to sort of establish a new limit, something, something that requires uh, some clarity so that going forward, everybody can be on the same page. If, if you can think of a limit that is new that you want to, to workshop through today in this training, write that in the comments, okay? So just a sec, I'm, sometimes the sound comes um, on and it's Some clarity. There we go. So in, in the comments of this video, write what limit you're trying to set. So it could be um, turning off the iPad when I ask that, want to ask him to. And that's like for recreational screen time. It could be um, asking before grabbing. I want her to ask her brother if she can have it, bef have, have a toy before, she, you know, instead of grabbing. So the limit would be something about grabbing toys or asking, or asking to have toys. Um, a limit could be, um, we, don't, we don't all just leave the dinner table, like everybody pitches in to clean up before we leave the dinner table. That could even be kind of a one part routine, one part setting boundaries and setting limits and kind of establishing expectations, yeah? Whatever it is that you find yourself repeating a lot, feeling frustrated by, go ahead and write it in the comments. So I've got Lee here. Hi, Lee. Lee's one of my amazing clients. Um, she is writing, stop messing around at dinner and focus on finishing the meal. Okay, so you don't want as much play at the table and kind of dilly-dallying, Lee. You would really like for them to focus on eating so that, that you could release them in, into uh, another space where they could where it is sanctioned for them to play like that's like might it, like let's leave the dinner table so we can have our play time yeah I hear that okay good one I'm um, gonna wait for a few more to roll in before we kind of workshop forward so what I want you to to check to check your let your limit through a couple of questions okay so the first question is what um, why do you want this I want you to tune into the why and I want you to, to, to kind of draft up the language that you could stand behind in the moment and explain to your child. <laughs> yeah, dilly dally. Um, you, that you could explain to your child and really stand behind. So sometimes let's, we, we can draft through a few times. You could put, put what comes to mind in the comments and then I'll give you feedback about maybe a way to get firm it up a little bit more or maybe ask you a few questions. So one of the things you, one of the ways that we can really, um, tune into like the why, the reason why is, um, first of all, a cause and effect. If you do this, then it has this negative, negative effect. But if you do the positive thing, you know, the, the desired behavior, then it'll have this positive effect. So sometimes it's just that A plus B equals C. You just, you, you just have that logic. So um, I'm, I'm gonna use yours, Lee. Like, so if you, if you uh, dilly dally, or if you, if you take extra time at the table, then you'll have less time to play. But if you finish up, focus on eating and just finish up real quick, then, you know, like in, in a reasonable amount of time, then you'll have, you'll have more time to play. Um, that could be one way you could, you could frame it out. Another could be um, when, you, when you're not focused on eating, it, every, everything, everything takes longer. And now when you can talk about your, the impact, and now mommy and, mommy and daddy need to, need to wait to wash the dishes, and then we don't get to, we don't get to have as much time either. So that could be the negative and the positive could say, hey, well, if, you, if you could finish, if you could finish up, we could finish the dishes and we can join you and play with you before, before we have to head to bedtime routine. So that's a kind of like a nuanced difference, but it's there. So the first one you could do is just kind of a logic step out um, of cause and effect. Another thing is sometimes the limit is more about like something that's a value, like there's something that's really important to you. So you can, I like statements that are um, really similar to having sort of a family manifesto or a credo where it's like, in our family, we, dot, dot, dot. In our family, we, um, we respect each other's bodies and keep each other safe. I'm thinking about like a child who's maybe being too rough, right? Um, in our family, we all help clean up because we all make the mess, because we all, we all make messes, yeah? So, so, so that, that's another way you could do it, is really leaning into like what the value is that this limit or rule represents. So you can go ahead 
Um, Lee, I'd love for it to hear in your in your um, example, like what what you could say in the moment that you could really stand behind that could really back it up. Now, if you're just joining, what I want you to do in the comments is write, what is a limit that, that is really hard to set? Either because it's new and you're still figuring it out, or it's something that you find yourself just on repeat about. You keep telling the kids and they're not listening. Let me help you through a few steps here to get really clear. So write in the comments like Lee did about what, what you'd like your children to listen to better. Okay, what limit, what rule, what expectation, so I can support you too. And you get to play, you get to uh, play with me here in, in this inquiry. Um, okay, got good, Flacco's got one, time for bed. Good one. So transitioning from whatever the evening activity is to getting ready for bed. Or Flacco, maybe be more specific with me so I know which one it is. Is it getting ready for bed or they're ready for bed and now they need to actually get into bed? Can you just let me know in the comments and I can help you even more? So those of you who are listening who haven't written a comment in the comments yet, don't worry. We can just, you can use this, if you're listening to the recording, you can still comment or you can think about how different it sounds when you have a reason to stand behind um, so that you can, you can really stand there confidently. So it's a difference between, oh, would you just stop, please? I really, it's so irritating to me that you won't just focus on your eating. Come on. <laughs> that sounds more like, Oh, this is the reason I'm saying this to you is because it's hard for me and I want you to, you to make my day less hard. <laughs> and that just becomes more of like a, like a, um, a power struggle, right? Because it's like, you're doing this to me. I'm not happy with you. You better because then it makes me happy. And I won't, you know, like kind of making them responsible for how your, your mood or how you're feeling versus sweetie, it's really important that we focus on our eating. And I love what Lee said, um, because if you finish, finish your meal in the next five minutes, that means that daddy and I will have time to play with you um, after dinner. And you can preview the opposite too. You can say, and if you choose to keep, you know, to, to spend more than five minutes finishing up your dinner, well, that means daddy and I won't have time to play with you and we'll have to kind of go straight to bedtime, bedtime routine. What do you choose, honey? Do you want to have time to play after dinner or, you know, and with mommy and daddy? Or, you know, would you like to go straight to bedtime routine? What would you like? And it kind of gives them back, gives it back to them, but I'm getting a little ahead of myself <laughs> offering choices. But see, notice how clear it is. It's a lot different than making it about how you're feeling about how irritated you are, which you are. Just can, you can share your real feelings, but I recommend you move on to that, that clear logic of cause and effect or that clear like value that you stand behind. Um, for example, like Flaca, maybe it could be something about like wanting to stand behind, um, you know, getting, we, we get enough rest in our home because in our family, because we know that that's a really important thing to stay healthy, especially right now, we all really want to stay healthy. Flaca saying a consistent time for bed. Yeah, they know when I bathe them and then it's time for bed. They read a story and their oldest comes up with many excuses not to go to sleep. Ooh, okay, good. So, um, you probably are in a little bit of a game, Flaca, with your little one, <laughs> with your little one, your older of your little ones, um, where they think that it's time to come up with, it's like, let's come up with excuses game <laughs> so that they can spend more time with you and get more attention before they actually have to tuck in. Um, so if I would just first um, consider how you might change up the pattern of that a bit. Where you you basically say I'm not I'm not a willing I'm not willing to play this game with you, yeah. So you can kind of um, shift it a little bit there, and just saying like, oh, funny, you think it's time to to do all these other things, but it's only time to go to bed, yeah. And that's where you, you can have that reason that you can stand right stand behind it with your three year old and saying, nope, we are, we are getting we're putting bodies in the bed, and we're tucking in. And this is where the second part of like not being too vague. We're putting our bodies in the bed, laying on our belly. We're gonna put the blanket over you. I'm gonna rub your back. Got it? Would you like me to make you into a little a little burrito or blanket taco or like blanket you know sandwich <laughs> um, tonight or not? And like that's where you kind of can roll into. This is what's happening. I'm really clear about my directions, and um, and giving them a little choice about how it can happen. 
because then it brings their attention not to pushing back on the limited self, but like more attention on how it's going to go. And that gives them some more autonomy, especially with three year olds and Janae's here and Lee's here with all both with kids under five as well. And um, they can they can uh, <laughs> chime in about the power of choice. Right, Janae and Lee. So Janae's saying um, at pickup from uh, sitter's house, Eli gets feisty and stops respecting the other kids' bubbles, like their space bubbles, their personal space bubbles, right? And he wants to leave fast. Um, but there's a certain amount of wrap-up needed. He'll do his, but sister is slower. Interesting. So I want to get a very clear sense, Janae. I hear the problem. What would you like to happen? Like, get really clear with your language. Like, um, you would like you would like him to, you know, and I want, Lee, I want you to work on yours too, just a bet, right? So finish up dinner is great, but I would love to like for you to shift into, um, you know, fin finish finish the bites that are set aside, or have have your plate checked and clean, um, you know, dishes like plates plates in sink by five minutes because we eat, we finished that part. Like I want you to get more concrete with your language about what the goal is in those five minutes. Okay, just just to make it even more like because what little kids like and what they need is they like to be anchored into concrete reality. So if you're saying like pick up the red pencil and 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 uh, you know and hold it with your little with your little pincer and 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 put your pencil to paper, such a difference be, between that and get started on your writing. And it's amazing, like kids just they they need, it's almost like they need to anchor into like the physical reality in front of them in order to just sort of not be in their heads in their little fantasy world or in their little jabby game they're doing with their sister, maybe Lee, <laughs> you know, singing their songs or telling their jokes. There's other things happening. But if you could say, um, oh, I see peas are still on your plate, sweetheart. You know, those little green peas, we got to get those off your plate in your belly in these next five minutes if we want to play. So that's just a little a little shift there. Yeah, in Flocka with your two and three, it's really effective to actually name the colors, the shapes, the, the objects, and being very specific about what you want. So Janae, help me clue in. Um, okay, sarcasm with your third. Oh, Jana's having sarcasm with her 13 year old. Okay. So again, it's a really great that that's a really great big topic. And it has to do with tone and attitude, right? And what's funny and what's teasing and that line in between. And so you you can have a, a with a 13 year old, you can actually have a, quite a conversation about the difference. Look up the word sarcasm, look up irony, look up um, you know, these these words, ironic, for example, and and just get a sense and even like contrary, you know, and get a confrontational, contrary, and just start to like have a dialogue and like a name for the for for the attitude and the tone and and kind of feel into like what the like the cause and the fact right so if he's using sarcasm during a time where you're trying you you would really like him to get on board to support you with say some housework um that's not gonna roll well right and you can explain why you could say wow just seem like i'm i'm on my plate as the as one of the house leaders right like i'm a leader in this house um a household manager so to speak um i track what needs to get done around here which is part of my job and i accept that but what i do need is help from from my family members in order to keep the house like healthy safe and clean um so when i come to you and i say hey hun i'd really like some help with the dishes and you throw a sarcastic remark out there ouch i feel that in my heart, you know, it hurts because I'm doing my, I'm holding up my end and it feels like you're not holding up yours. So what could we do differently here? And so you, with a 13 year old, I actually like to throw it back to them to help them come up with the limit and the specific language around it to, and see what they've got for me to work with before I sort of like go, sweetheart, when I, when I ask you to do the dishes, I need you to come over here and do, and, and do them without making a sarcastic remark and actually be kind to me. That can come at the end as sort of a mutual agreement, but when kids are tweens and teens, and especially if they're heading into this sort of like snarky attitude, just hold on to your, hold on to your seats, Janae, the end, <laughs> Flocka. Um, definitely, definitely you're going to want to like collaborate with them. Okay. 
and and see if you can kind of um, share some of your inside story, like how 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 you're feeling and, and what it means to you and how you see it from a bigger perspective. Because teens and tweens are really good at only focusing on themselves, but thinking that they know everything. So you're <laughs> gonna wanna help to kind of like, you know, uh, clue them in, in this way that, that, that really um, enrolls them in the idea that this is actually the right thing to do and what you're asking for isn't nagging, it isn't, you know, tone, tone policing, you're just trying to, to have a reasonable way forward where he gets on board with things. So, so Jana, I would, um, and I love that you're tuning in all the way uh, from across the world. <laughs> um, I would pick one thing first to just practice this with where you feel like that sarcasm is just really inappropriate. It's so off base and, and help them to understand what's, what, what's the truth of that and help them to come, come into agreement with you about a, a better way forward. That way in the moment you could say, hey, you know and I know this isn't the time for that. Like we can play and be sarcastic when we're watching a movie or whatever later, but right now, not the time. It's too much for my heart, you know? And, and having that kind of dialogue with him. Um, so, Lee, so Janae is saying, I'd like him to gather his items. Ooh, I love that, so specific. Gather your items, yes. Help his sister gather her items if needed. Say thank you and goodbye. Okay, so this is all a mini routine, Janae. So I would have you lean, like Janae, another amazing, excellent student and client of mine, just like Lee, um, I would have you lean on that routines piece that we have been um, you know, practicing and, and have, have a little bit of a role play preview with him. And what, especially with Eli, because he's so sensitive and strong, um, strong-minded, you know, like he, he can picture it, like it's not gonna be hard for him to go there. I would ask him, what honey might get in the way of you being able to gather your items? what honey might get in the way of you being able to help your sister? And he will have answers for you, I guarantee it. <laughs> and, and I would really show up more like in the support role of like, how can I help you with getting through that? You know, how can I help you? Um, or what's something you could do before that moment that will prepare you? For example, uh, my stuff just ends up all over the place and my stuff is everywhere and I have no idea where it is. It's like, okay, honey, what could, what could help that? What's a way that would make it easier for you to be able to find everything at the end? Well, I mean, I could like bring things back more to a spot. And I was like, and he's like, oh, do you have a spot where you put your things so you know where they are later? You know, just some simple like little practical life skills that you can kind of like work in there with him, Janae. I would work, go, go from that angle with him because now you're being so clear. It's about like what's getting in the way. And then I would leave him with, sweetie, would you be willing to try and give him like the two or three, like one, two or three things that would make that difference. Would you be willing to try um, wearing a watch so you know what time it is and so you can anticipate 10 minutes before it's time to go that you know, you're gonna need to start gathering your things. Would you be willing to um, have a designated spot where you put your things as you go? Would you be willing to um, you know, save a few minutes to help your sister because she struggles and is so, she's so much younger and she struggles with time. Um, would you be willing to do those things? And then I would also ask, how might you feel if you're successful in getting all your things in your bag and being able to help your sister out and kind of like be that big brother? And um, you maybe even have a little, a couple extra minutes at the end um, to visit and have some fun or, or um, you know, like leave, leave more on time, whatever his, his like sort of goal it sounds like he wants to get out of there. Um, so how is that, Janae? How do you like those sound bites to talk to him about? You said, love this. What, what might be in the way? Yes, he tells me he has too much big guy energy. Okay, good, right. Yeah, yeah. And so giving him a tool that puts him more in charge, like a watch, or, um, and, and, and giving him a spot where he can put his things, you know, just keeping those things in mind, just those come to mind to me from all the, the little guys I've seen having a hard time with that specific transition. Um, and role play it through. It's like, hey, could we just, could we just like take a minute to just walk, walk me through, like, and have him walk you through it. Walk me through what happens, honey. Instead of like, hey, want to take turns practicing our routine? Like, I don't think he'll like that as much as him getting to show you um, for your, your Eli, <laughs> since I know him pretty well. Lee says, Kate, if you finish all of the food on your plate in five minutes, then daddy and I will play with you after cleanup. If you do not finish, then we won't be able to play with you. Alexa, set a timer for five minutes. 
that's so concise. Lee, you've got a game plan now. Good. Yes. And I would even piggyback on what I just said to Janae. I would, I would do with your girls too. And I would tell them, I would tell them this ahead of time, say, so like it, maybe it's even at the beginning of the meal. So remember friends, remember, remember sweethearts when, when there's about five minutes left, I'm going to let you know that that's your, that's your time to finish your dinner. And that's your chance. I would do it like really give it to them. Like that's your chance to have some playtime with me and daddy. So I will make sure to set a timer on Alexa. Does that sound like a good idea? And they might get like into it because it's sort of like, oh, you want to have, you want me to have the thing I want too? Great. And you're going to help me with that? Wow. You know, like it's just a different feeling instead of like, if you don't do this, then this bad, then you don't get this. It shifts it. And it, I just want you all to hear, hear the like shift in that and how you, and think about how you might do that for not just the moment, right, Lee, this moment, but a whole bunch of other times the kids are not getting on board. Um, yeah, Jana, so you're butting heads, you know, sometimes too, like going straight at it, like straight at like the conversation about the tone and the attitude is hard. Um, so what I would do with my very moody tween, <laughs> man, my stepson, whew, you know, we had some years there, he had some years there and I was there for it. Um, for them um, is to connect before you correct. You know, if you are in a pattern of, or even like this, like butting heads, I would do, I would, before bringing this up and kind of sharing your true feelings, you know, like how you're really feeling about his sarcasm and, and I would use a specific example, um, instead of just coming straight at him and being like, I'm sharing my heart with you, he might just go, ah, because he gets too much, right? So what you might think of doing is building in something that you both enjoy and can put your attention on. It could also just be something he enjoys that you just join him in and you kind of be the bigger person that way. <laughs> we always have to, we always, it's always us, it seems like um, who has to be the bigger person. But let's say he's really into, I don't know, I'll make something up, Pokemon or Dragon Ball Z or uh, Avatar The Last Airbender or a band or um, a comedian or something. And maybe find a time when the two of you can actually enjoy that topic together like maybe watch an episode with him or you just talk about like hey i've always wondered about this character um or it could be something else of interest and just have a bit of time together side by side focusing on something where you feel like there's just this more camaraderie and connection and you're not pushing buttons and he's not and he doesn't really need to either and then and then and then i like to segue into like a hey sweetie there's been something that's weighing on my heart i'd really just like to share with you would that be okay and nine times out of 10, if you did the connect piece really well, the segue into the sort of correction piece, which is more of like collaborating towards a solution, um, goes smoother. So I just wanted to throw that out there. When establishing limits or resetting limits, it's a, a really big piece, the connecting before correcting. Um, Flaka, I'm so glad you're gonna give it a shot tonight and being more consistent or more clear about what it is that you, that, that it's, it's happening and there aren't a whole lot of other, there aren't a lot of other options except how this thing is going to happen. And just really standing behind that. I love that you're gonna do that. Please come back to this video and let us know how it goes. I know we are, we're all curious now. Janae, Lee, Jana, anyone else who's listening, um, you know, I will wanna to know too. Lee, I'm gonna to wanna to hear what you, like how it goes with dinner tonight. Janae, next time you do that pickup, please share with us. And Jana, you know, if you have that heart to heart with your little one, like, let it, I mean, your big one, let us know. We wanna know like what, what came out of that? Were you both able to sort of deescalate and, you know, kind of keep your lids on and stay out of that power struggle and that butting heads? Were you able to get more on the same page? I'd love to hear about it. Especially because sarcasm is such a, it's such a trademark of like snarky teenage years. And so this is gonna be a really good one for you to tackle now while he's 13. And cause you're going to be probably dealing with some version of it for the next five <laughs> at least. So, and at least that was my experience. So we kind of just kind of, you, you'd be lo lovely to get to the point where you just go, hey, really? That's not cool. You know, try that again. That was a little, that was, that was a little, a little too edgy there, hon. You know, or like, uh, I'm not into this conversation when you're ready to be cool, when you're ready to be kind and respectful, you know, um, and, and lose the sarcasm, we can continue. And you can't just jump there though. 
So I want you to build a, build your steps and your bridge there so that it's more of a you know and I know in the moment and less of a fight. Yeah, and that goes for all the ages. We want more of that side-by-side -side feeling, more of that same team feeling. So coming back to it, asking for what you do want and being really specific about what it is, It'd be as concrete as possible the younger they are. Um, really getting side by side with them, especially if they're older, um, and having some conversations before it even happens. Getting a little bit of agreement of like, this is what we talked about, right? Like you, you had a heads up on this. It also helps you to like refresh your game plan. So before dinner, Lee, Janae, when you're driving off, you know, when you're dropping off or maybe right before you head over, you can review what's gonna, you know, what, what you, you had discussed. Um, Flaka, you might do it like, you know, during bath, just like reviewing like, okay, so after bath, this, this, and this happens. Are we gonna do this, this, and this? No, no, that's not what's happening, right. We're gonna, we're gonna follow the three steps that we do and you'll get to choose if I tuck you in, you know, make you into a burrito or make you into a sandwich or something, make it up, okay? Something fun that, you know, something sweet that you, you could choose. Your three-year-olds, all oh, three-year-olds. I love three-year-olds, they're so in the moment though. <laughs> so you might say it three or four times, Laka, at dinner, during bath time. As you get out of the bath, and when you're right in that moment, it, it takes some repetition and it being as concrete as possible. Another thing you can, a phrase you can use with your little ones that I wanna give you, are you ready to blank? If you're ready to blank, please show me blank. So if you're ready to stop hitting your sister, please put your hands in my hands so I know that your hands are done hitting. If you're, if you're, um, if you're, ready, if you're ready to get out of the bath, Show me by, by hopping right over here so I can wrap you in your towel and we can put your pajamas on. If you're ready to leave the bathroom and go straight to bed, show me by, by putting your pajamas on and standing right by the door. If you're ready to get straight into your covers and, open, and head, out, head down the hallway, show me by holding my hand if he usually runs off and goes to the refrigerator instead or something, right? Are you, if you're, if you're ready, are you ready to, if you're ready to, please show me this. Um, so helpful with transitions, especially. If you're ready to, to um, be done with dinner, um, please have, eat three more bites. Um, if you're ready to leave the table, remember to say, can you check my plate, please? Oh, yeah, I checked your plate. It looks like you're ready, but you know, before you can head over to there, make sure, what are we gonna do? We're gonna go to the sink. We're gonna put a plate in, wash our hands, and then we can touch our toys. We got it? Yeah, we got it. Okay, let's go. It's amazing how much you need to sort of just give them that little bit of dialogue to help them stay on track with what we need from them and what they need to be doing for themselves and each other. It's just part of the job. Yay, yay, parents. <laughs> Yay, teachers, how much this is helping us to get clear about what we want, to be able to be specific and concrete, to try and get on the same page with our kids and be on their team and them on our team. And <laughs> this is one of the ones that I just like, you know, um, how to sort of embrace the role of, of, of breaking things down into these, into these concrete, clear steps and choices. And that if you don't, haven't had a lot of practice of this in your life, you're going to get so good at it. Especially if you hang with me here as Lee and Janae know. And Jana, you've been around for a long time in this group. And we've, we've consulted, you know, um, that it's, it's something that develops over time. And that's why I offer additional mentorship for anybody who's interested in, you know, really taking a look at your parent profile of like strengths and challenges. What are some of the ways that you are really showing up well? And what are some of the ways that you could use some more tools and strategies? And I have a way for you to do that, which is to take my parent discovery quiz, which I know Lee and Janae both have as my clients, but I know Flaka you haven't, and maybe some other folks who are listening later have not. I'm gonna put the link in this post so you can hop over and take that parent discovery quiz. I have opened up several spots in my calendar this month for, for a complimentary 20 minute strategy session where just like today you got to see how i walked through it with you with each of you um, but we'll spend the full 20 minutes just on you and we'll go over your quiz results we'll figure out if it's a good fit to work together any further with no obligation and you'll also leave with specific personalized strategies that you can put into place at least one usually two or three that you can put into place like that day 
and see a change, whether it's to get kids on boards with uh, rules and limits, whether it's to run a smoother routine, whether it's to get another caregiver on the same page as you, or maybe do some repair in a relationship. These are all parts, uh, part of the seven pillars framework that I work from and that the quiz is based from. So if that's you, this quiz is for you if you'd like more clarity about what to focus on next, if you'd like, and if you'd like to have a chance to apply for the free complimentary 20 minute, no strings attached, no obligation strategy session with me. I've got about six to nine spots open this month, so it's pretty limited. So if you are interested, this is a good time to just go ahead and do it. You'll get a lot out of the quiz, and then you'll have that opportunity to meet with me one-on-one. -on -one. That being said, we'll be back next week for another part of our seven-part surviving the school, back to school time, um, survival skills. And I hope that this piece is going to help you to smooth out the rougher parts of the day, the parts that are giving you more frustration, more conflict, and allow for you to pave the way to get through this stressful transition together with that feeling of being on the same team and having a lot less um, conflict and power struggle. My gift to you this session today, this, this training, I'm gonna continue coming, coming back on Mondays at two. And um, yeah, congratulations for stepping in and leaning in and learning more today. I'm so impressed with each one of you. Jen, I'm so glad you're here too, Jennifer. Um, yeah, we really do need concrete steps as adults as well. So keep this, keep this video open, just refresh the page to get the parent discovery quiz link. Um, sometimes it lets me put it into the comments. I'll try right now, but if not, it'll be in the post. So here it is for you so you can get more clarity. And if there's anything specific that you got out of this training, because it, it applied to your situation so clearly, let us know in the comments. Let me know. It gives me a sense of what you got out of it, but also it's a way for you to mastermind and learn from each other, just like we do in our year-long academy for parents, okay? So go ahead and put it in the comments, something that you took away. I see that Jen already said, I need concrete steps as an adult too. Jenna says, you're the best. Make so much sense. Can you just come and live with us? I wish. Maybe I'll, I bet the air is clearer there, Jana. <laughs> um, Jana. Um, and yeah, so just let me know what you got out of this. And um, you're welcome, Janae. So good to see you today. I know it's tough to find these afternoon times to hop into these trainings. So I just so admire you for being here. Um, and I'll see you on our next immersion training as well. And next session. And then Jennifer's gonna take the quiz, it's great. Yeah, you know, it'll bring you so much clarity. And so I'm looking forward to that for you, Jen. I've had 70 people take it just this year, 70 families. Um, and it really has brought into focus, like what to work on next in like such a chaotic patchwork landscape of like, how do I raise kids in this world and make sure that they come out like resilient and thriving, <laughs> right? So. Um, that's great. Good to hear. I'm looking forward to seeing your results. All right, y'all. I will see you next time. Let me know if you need anything in between. You can always throw a post into the group. I'm here for that. If you have another question, report back. Let us know how everything went, and I'll see you next time. All right. Bye for now.